Yes. Hello, I'm Roger Killen, the Community Manager for Entrepreneurs International ne Network. Today, Dagmar Fleming is going to help you increase your income by conquering three success saboteurs. Dagmar, I have four questions that were going to help us get to know you at a personal level. Question number one, what is the best decision that you have ever made? <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, the best mistake, uh, the best decision for me was to start my own business. Um, this is an entrepreneurs network. So I think everyone will agree with me that uh, it, it's so rewarding to work for yourself, to see the fruits of your labor and to expand in the process. So I've had a thrilling corporate career and I was extremely successful at it. Uh, and instead of bad, um, I am thrilled to be working for myself for over a decade now. Well, well done. You're, uh, you're in the top 3% of all entrepreneurs who have survived for at least five years. Well done. Exactly. Question number two, what would you describe as being your superpower? Uh, my superpower is uh, an ability that is inherent to me. I, I was born with this gift to be able to see the patterns within uh, um, people's thinking and behavior. I see these patterns energetically. I can trace them to the point of origination, meaning when was the first time you conceived a limiting belief, which as science proves, usually happens before the age of seven. And then I'm able to help uh, those who work with me directly to release those um, distractive behaviors or limiting beliefs and replace them with an empowering um, mindset of success. Great. That's a powerful superpower. I wish I had that. Third question, what impact would you like to have on planet Earth for your one and only very precious life? Well, I am very passionate uh, as an entrepreneur uh, about helping other business owners fulfill their life purpose. Um, I believe that every single entrepreneur started their uh, business venture to express their passion, their dreams, their desires, that their impact that they want to fulfill uh, and have on other people. So by helping them thrive, you know, we create this uh, reverberation through the universe where your success um, creates success for others. So to change the consciousness on the earth, we have to lift each other up. So um I, I want to know that my business, my service, my abilities have served others. So in turn, they can serve those they are here to impact. Lovely. Now, the final question is more fun loving. What fun fact would you like us to know about you? Yes. So I uh, love science. I love engineering. So I'm a bit of a quantum physics geek. I, uh, I love watching the movies about quantum physics, reading books, and constantly learning about how the universe manifests the physical reality. So I've been known to win the arguments with quantum physicists, and I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Now, uh, some message for the participants. Uh, please, 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 please turn your video on. In other words, come on camera because it's tough for, uh, for the speaker to get energy and sustain energy for an hour, an hour when you're behind your camera. So help Dagmar help you by coming on camera as much as possible. Having said that, uh, stay muted uh, until Dagmar invites you to unmute and participate uh, verbally. Uh, you probably will have observed that this workshop is being recorded and uh, the recording will be uploaded to the EIN YouTube channel. I will type the URL for that channel into the chat in a few minutes. 
Uh, but this is, that means you don't really have to take notes unless you want to, and you can always go back and review the video in the EIN channel at your leisure. <clears throat> Dagmar, are you ready to knock our socks off? Absolutely. Let's let's get started. So, um, as you mentioned, Roger, what we're going to look today at is those three pesky unconscious saboteurs that keep us from making the money that we want and deserve. So what we'll focus on is the three mistakes that most business owners I've worked with and myself in the past, as I will explain in a second, um, have fallen into that stop them from making all the money that they want and deserve. And at the end of this presentation, I'll, I'll extend a special invitation to all of you to join me and continue this journey if this is something that you resonate with. So, so let's get started. Um, you know, Roger, you mentioned earlier when you were um, asking me questions about me, um, about surviving uh, over 10 years in business. And, and it's actually right on point because according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 20% uh, of all businesses will fail in their first year. Uh, by the fifth year, half of those businesses will be completely out. And by the 10th year, 70% of small business owners will be um, out of business. So I don't know how about you guys, but I do not want to be one of those statistics. And this is why my passion is to share with entrepreneurs how to get unstuck, break through their hidden money ceiling, and reach the income potential. So I am Dagmar Fleming, and I am founder of Unlock Your Success programs for entrepreneurs who want to accelerate their growth, reach their income potential, and most importantly, fulfill their life purpose in the process. And over the last decade plus, decade plus, I've worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you to help them get unstuck, expand their business, and feel good about it. Because sometimes as business owners, we get so uh, nitty gritty in the daily grind that we lose the passion and they almost lose the sight of why we started this business to begin with. So as I mentioned, in the next um let's say 40 minutes, so we have plenty of time for interaction, we'll go through these free and unconscious mistakes and help you not only identify them, uh, but also overcome them. So if that sounds good, I applaud you for being here because I think you've made a very clear decision. So what, if, if, you're, if you're ready to learn what these mistakes are, then uh, just put in the chat, let's rock and roll or uh, let's go. Well, however you want to do that, like give me a green light so, so we can move forward. Uh, by the way, I love my workshops to be super interacting. It's not a presentation. It's not a speech. It's us working together. So I'll be asking you questions as we move along. Feel free to uh, unmute yourself and just let's talk. Because ultimately, uh, we, we expand and we move by simply uh, interacting. All right. So the mistake number one is that most entrepreneurs that I work with think and act too small. So think and act too small. And this affects you in many ways. Because what you focus on is what you get. So if you think small, you get small. But if you think big, you get what? Why don't you put in the chat? What do you think you get? What kind of results do you get when you think big? Big. Roger, Roger's listening. Okay, guys, if you don't participate, I'm out of here. <laughs> All right, wonderful. One of the reasons we do ask you to participate because it's actually a proven fact that when you engage your body, you type things, you raise your hand, you use your voice, certain uh, uh, educational points get more in growth, like more embedded in your consciousness. 
as a, and as a mindset expert, I help you reprogram your subconscious mind. So yes, you get the big results. And here's the amazing thing is that most people don't realize that um, your brain does not care if you think small or if you think big. It's actually doing what you've programmed it to do. So let me give you an example. Imagine that you go to an office depot to pick up a paper for your printer. What are the steps that you need to take in order to get that paper? Who wants to unmute themselves and just simply tell me what would you need to do to get that paper? Mugishan. Uh, can you actually repeat your question again? Yes. If you had, if you wanted to purchase paper from the Office Depot, what would you have to do? Okay, so the first step would be to first find an Office Depot to go to, because there's thousands of them. And once you pick a location, you go there and you ask for a piece of paper. Exactly. So you know, it's, you, you need to physically get to the store. Once you're in the store, you're probably going to grab a basket, go to the paper, get the paper pay, right? Now imagine that Office Depot sends you um, an email that says, today only, we're going to give you six huge boxes of paper for the price of one. My question to you is, are you going to seize that opportunity? Say, put a yes in the chat if you think it's a good opportunity to, to grab. We get yeses, wonderful. So let's come back to Mugishan for a moment. And let me ask you this. Now you're going to Office Depot, not just for that one little box of paper. You're going for this huge, huge box that has at least six rims inside. And you, you're going to get six of them for the price of one. So when you enter the Office Depot, something will change because the actions before Office Depot didn't change. You still had to grab your wallet. You had to get into a car. You had to arrive at the store. But now that you're in the store, you're going to pick up six huge boxes of paper. So what's different this time? I think what's different is that you, you know getting you know, getting those big pieces of paper are actually very accessible to you now that you can just go in there. You can actually ask for a piece of paper and what the price that they're asking for is not that much. So I could just, so I could, uh, def so I can uh, get what I came for. You want to You need a card to actually put the six reams because if you're just picking up one ream, you don't need a cart, but if you are picking up six reams, you need a cart. Exactly. Thank you, Ashok. And you That's need a exactly special what... car, given the weight of a box of paper. Yeah. So the difference is the little basket is not going to hold six huge boxes of paper. You need a cart. So now you're rolling through the store with a huge cart instead of the little basket. That's mm. the action that you've taken. You've taken a bigger action to match the bigger result, right? So let me ask you this question. When you are picking that cart, when you're rolling it through the, through the store, are you judging yourself for the size of the cart? So if I were to roll the cart, am I judging the size of the cart? Is that the exactly. question? Yes. I would say so because you still you need to find room to put uh, to put fit those boxes in those cart. Yeah, but I'm asking about you. Are you judging yourself? Are you saying to yourself like, "Oh my goodness, I'm now I'm with the big big car." Yeah. Of course you are. <laughs> I I will not I will not bother looking at the size of the cart. I will only verify and confirm that it is, is it big enough to accommodate six rings? Exactly, a shock A plus. Here's the bottom line is when you go to a grocery store you're, and you're 
and you know you need groceries for the whole two or three weeks, you're not going through the grocery store thinking like, I don't know what people will think about me. I've just taken a huge card. You know, am I good enough to be rolling with good huge card? Am I good enough to be getting uh, that many groceries at once? You're, you're just accommodating the size of the groceries with an appropriate vehicle. What I'm trying to show you is that most people judge themselves even for the goals they set. So if, if I said, you know, I invite you to double or triple your goals, most of you will have immediate reaction. Well, well, well what do you mean? My business is only bringing 100,000 a year and you're telling me that now I'm going to triple it? Where will this come from? Who will give it to me? Am I good enough? Do I have what it takes? This is a typical thinking of an entrepreneur. And then there comes this word called realistic. Well, realistic is an enemy of dreams. So when you judge yourself for the actions that you will take, you actually end up shutting them down. You do not pursue those actions. And what I'm trying to show you is that dreaming big, setting bigger goals is no different than you walking into Office Depot and picking up a big card to accommodate big purchase. There is no judgment. Nobody's walking around Office Depot judging you based on the size of your cart. It's you, you've got the need, you're rolling with the cart, do with it as you please. So my invitation is understand where you're shooting yourself down when you're thinking bigger. Because to, to your brain, it doesn't matter. Are you taking small basket or are you taking a huge cart? It doesn't matter if you're saying, I want to make $10,000 a month or you, you want to be making $60,000 a month. The brain is simply saying, what do you want? So make it work for you. The same way it works for you when you're rolling with the card versus rolling with the little basket in hand. So as I mentioned, always double or triple your goals and let your brain stretch into that vision. Now, the moment we start increasing our goals, a lot of entrepreneurs get scared because it's outside of their comfort level. So they start wondering, well, how will I ever get there? Dagmar said to triple my goal. So I did. And what do I do now? How will I get there? What will I do? How will this appear? This is when we leverage what I call the art of questions. We use power questions. What kind of questions? Power questions. Power questions. Power questions. Very good. So what are the power questions? See, these are the questions that give us the answers that propel us forward instead of keeping us small and stuck exactly where we are. So the power question number one to use when you've just expanded your vision and set up these hairy, audaciously outrageous goals is to say, what one small step can I take towards that big vision? Because think about the GPS. When you put a direction, an address in your GPS, and you're about to start the car, does it say to you, you'll go to the left, to the right, then you'll switch here, then put seven miles, you'll do that, and then you'll turn around, and then you'll do this, and then you'll do that. And you're like, uh, so what do I do? No. The GPS says, turn to the right. And when you get there, it says, continue for five miles straight. And when you finish those five miles, the GPS says, go to the left now. So instead of trying to figure out how will I get there, OMG, I just tripled my goals, simply say, what one small step can I take today to what's that goal? All right, so like, let's give us an example. Um, Mogishan, what would be your goal? You're trying to get your business going, your website business expanded. So what would be your goal? Uh, for the, so what would be, 
okay. either income goal or client acquisition goal? How much would you like to make a month? Um, I would definitely like to make uh, over one k one thousand dollars a month. Well, this one's basically from research. I took a guide on how to do freelancing, and the projects they usually charge are like five thousand dollars a month. Now, granted, I could still set my price, but that would be an ideal that I want to work with. So what you're saying is you want to make at least $5,000 a month. Yes. Okay. And you've just learned from me that you have to, when you set up your goals, you have to do what? You have to double or triple it. Okay. So your goal from now on is going to be $15,000 a month. Okay. All right. So now we've got your vision. We've got a plan. We've expanded the brain. And now we're going to make the champion out of the brain instead of the critic. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you the question, what one small step can you take towards making $15,000 a month? Just one small step, the first step. Well, the first step would be to, <clears throat> the first step would be to define my service, uh, define my services. So what I'm willing to offer, what kind of services I could provide based on my skills, that would be the first small step that I would do. Excellent. Wonderful. What would be the second step? The second, <clears throat> the second step would be to brainstorm the potential clients that my services would most likely to appeal to. Okay. What's the third step? The third step would then to do my research to find groups that are most likely to have those demographics or groups where I'm more likely to generate potential clients. Mm -hmm. So what I'm showing you that you're literally writing out your own GPS directions and look how easy it is. Mm. See, because if I ask you, Mugishan, how will you make $15,000 a month? You'll be like, well, I don't know. That's the first response. But instead I just said, what you're going to do now? What you're gonna do next? What will you do after that? And guess what? If you just one day sit down and on a piece of paper, write down, this is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna do that. Before you know it, at the end of 30 minutes, you'll have the entire business plan for $15,000 a month. And you know exactly where you're going, when you're turning left, when you're turning right, and when you're going straight, right? So just use this kind of power question to, to literally map out where you need to go. Now, the second power question is, why is it so easy? So let's use Ashok and his business as an example. So what would be your goal for, let's say the month of, excuse me, the month of September? I am not thinking in terms of month of September. I'm thinking I am looking at $1 million cash. $1 million cash. Okay. So for the whole year, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. All right. So now my question to you is, and again, we're focusing on answering the question, why is it so easy to bring in $1 million in cash in 2022? What's the first answer that comes to your mind? Your question is, why is it so easy? Yes. Because I know the exact system that I have to implement. And once implemented, there is definitely a million dollars in my pocket. Okay, wonderful. So what, what I'm showing here is that, again, most entrepreneurs and most people in general in life with goals tend to fall into why is it so hard? They answer, I don't know, because that's an easy uh, scapegoat. I, I, I believe in one thing, that you don't get what you want. You manifest what you believe, you will get it. Exactly, exactly. So I believe so what, that I can get it, and I will get it. Wonderful, perfect. Ashok, you're getting an A+, plus, and we're just at the beginning of this workshop, so congratulations. So what I'm showing you now is that we program, just like Ashok said, we program our brain either for ease or for hardship. And when we say, why is it so easy? 
the brain actually kind of opens up and starts shooting a lot of solutions and a lot of answers. If you say, why is it so hard? Unfortunately, you'll get the answer. Because again, from the standpoint of evolution of the brain and its function, the function of the brain is not to judge. The function of the brain is to answer the question. So the quality of your question determines the quality of the answer that you get. Do you want it to be difficult and hard to make million dollars or do you want to make it easy? So by simply using that question, why is it so easy? And what one small step can I take? You've already rewired how you're approaching yourself and your business. Would you agree? Yes. All right. So if you like the power questions, just put the easy is what I like in the chat. Or just tell me I want the easy. Like you can use your own words. The, the point is put the easy in the chat. And also say one small step, right? So that to, to remember that in your GPS, when you program your goal, you only need to take one turn at a time. So wonderful. So to recap, the first mistake was that most entrepreneurs think and act how? Too small. Too small. So how are you going to think? Big. Big. Exactly. This class graduates to the mistake number two <laughs> with flying colors. <laughs> well, is it honors? Yes, with honors. So the mistake number two is that most entrepreneurs are unaware of the hidden money ceiling. Hidden what? Money ceiling. Money ceiling, exactly. So most of you will probably think like, uh, what on the earth is a money ceiling? Well, money ceiling is this uh, set point in your brain that uh, prohibits you from making money and generating income past certain level of comfort. In other words, once you hit that level, you will progress no further. And I'm sure you're probably wondering why on earth would I block myself from making the money when I'm telling everyone that I want more? Don't you want more money? You do, don't you? Mugish says, yes, yes, <laughs> excellent. Yes, we all want money. So let me ask you this simple question. It's going to be very serious and very difficult to answer. Are you guys ready? If you're ready, put yes in the chat. I need to prepare you because it's a very intense, difficult question. How many of you were born with parents? Mugisha <laughs> says yes. Ashok says yes. Exactly. So we were all born with parents. And how many of them talked? So when you were growing up, would you agree that they talked a lot? Some of my clients said incessantly. I can tell this by your, your faces that, yeah, they talked. You see, what they did is they said things like money doesn't grow on trees. Or steady paycheck is better than uncertainty of entrepreneurship. Or um, uh, rich people, you know, are evil or you know, whatever negative adjectives they want to add to that. What else have you heard growing up when it comes to money? Money is the root of all evil. Yes, we've heard that. How about money doesn't grow on trees? How ridiculous is that? Technically, money is made out of trees because it's made out of paper, right? Uh, whatever sayings you may have heard through your religion, cultural programming, TV, maybe your, your parents, uncles, or anybody in your life? Give me an example. Nothing? No thoughts about the bunny? Can you repeat the question? Yes, the question is, what kind of sayings about money have you heard growing up? 
Well, most most children hear all kinds of things what you just explained that money doesn't grow on tree, money is difficult, this thing and that thing. But once you come to understanding what exactly, because what is being told to you is going into your subconscious mind. But then you can consciously eradicate those false beliefs from your subconscious mind and put new beliefs what you feel is right. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly where we want to go with this because, you know, think of even saying it like, I don't deserve, um, um, the saying like, it's too expensive. Maybe your mom took you to a toy store before Christmas. You saw something really fancy. You really wanted that bike or you wanted that toy. And your mom said, it's too expensive. Now, it might look like it doesn't influence you, but what we unconsciously start internalizing when we hear that is that we're not good enough, that somehow we don't deserve more expensive toys. So later in life, we may end up actually living on a budget or feeling uncomfortable spending money or uncomfortable buying expensive things because the program that you're running on is I don't deserve expensive things. So what I'm showing you is that we have many, many limiting beliefs. How about I'm too old to succeed in this business? Other people have something that I don't. I don't have what it what it takes. Either I'm too old for this or I'm too young for this. How about, um, you know, to be that rich, I'll have to sacrifice my life and work myself to death. The, the beliefs do not have to even have money in the title. But if we think that the bigger income level is going to shut us down in some way or limit our freedom, then we will shy, shy away from that, um, from that uh, income. Uh, in my recent workshop, a lady said that her mother used to say, God will provide. So uh, this is a religious belief. And the lady's struggling with money because she's supposed to leave it up to God. She's not showing up for her own business the way the entrepreneur should show up and, and, and do what it takes, right? So what I'm showing you is that there is a plethora of this disempowering and the limiting beliefs around money. And by the way, when I work with my clients on um, changing their self-perceptions around money and those concepts about what they are worth, we, we first go through about 60 of those limiting beliefs and more, because every time I hear something from my clients, I add it to my list. And then we reprogram their subconscious mind with new empowering concepts about money, what you deserve, and who you can be. So to give you an idea about why these limiting beliefs in the back of your head are so important, is let me give you a story. Uh, one of my clients had a market, still has a marketing agency. And the reason he came to work with me is because he could never get past million dollars. Now for this client, it's million dollars, but trust me, I have many clients, some of them who have not even reached $100,000. I have client who was making $10 million. So what I'm trying to show you is that my clients range from startups to, to well-established businesses because we have all money blocks except they show up at a different level. For some people, they will show up by keeping them from making even $100,000. Some will be kept from making $10 million. But whatever it is, they've got their own money ceiling, that, that, that potential that's stuck below certain level. So for this client who had a marketing agency, he was trying to understand why every time he comes close to a million dollars or goes a little bit over it, why 
he suddenly things happen and he loses all that income. Now, what we were able to determine is that in his childhood, his father also had a business. The business was thriving. It went over a million dollars. And at that point, things went sour. The business went bankrupt and the family lost everything. So my client, John, ended up living with extended family. They lost a big house. They lost, you know, all the, all the typical uh, luxuries of their lifestyle. And unconsciously today, John believes that a million dollars leads to stress. It leads to loss of income. It leads to trauma. So this million dollar income level became his ceiling and he's trying to protect his own family, his own son from this potential danger by keeping the marketing agency always below that million dollars. So what I'm trying to show you is that an event in his childhood is now controlling how much he allows himself to make. It becomes something that he avoids because all of these beliefs around million dollars. So unfortunately, we all have these past experiences, these negative um, situations that influence us today and control how much we will allow ourselves to make. They are the ones that create that hidden money ceiling. So for each one of you, I invite you to really look at where you are financially today, see how long you've been at this level, because most likely you are stuck at a certain comfort level and it's keeping you from expanding and growing beyond that, which really for every entrepreneur, you want to grow. You want to exponentially show up. All right. So that was the mistake number two. Before I move to the mistake number one, are there any questions about the money ceiling or how we create it on the subconscious level? All right. So that brings me to mistake number one. And that is that most entrepreneurs are unaware of the uh, hidden blocks to success. They are deep-seated fears in their subconscious mind. They, they're not aware that they exist. They don't know how to identify them and they don't know how to overcome them. So let me kind of give you a bigger picture. What we've talked from the first mistake and the second mistake, what we've learned is that how, what we think will determine the actions that we will take. And in, in, in turn will determine the results that you will get. So if you just want a small piece of paper, you'll take an action, small basket, you'll get a small result just one piece of paper. But if you seize the opportunity for that promotion to get six boxes of paper, when you're starting thinking bigger, you'll take naturally a bigger action, you'll roll with bigger card, and you now will get a bigger result. You'll have enough paper to maybe run new marketing campaign, to go to a trade show and distribute many flyers and therefore get many prospects. So your internal thinking controls the results that you get. So we could say that your internal reality controls your external reality and that your mindset, how you perceive yourself, what you think you're capable of accomplishing, therefore determines over 90% of your results. Would you agree? Right? So the question then becomes, how do you change what you think about yourself and what is possible for you? And I'm going to answer that question differently. If you're ready to change 
why is it so darn difficult? Because if it was so easy as to say, yeah, you're right. Dagmar just said, I need to think bigger. So I'll just overnight do 180 and I'll think bigger. And from now on, I'll always roll with bigger baskets, right? Well, let's talk about the change and why we get stuck. So for this, I'm going to bring us back to my PowerPoint. So just allow me to share. So you have some visual to go with this explanation. Imagine that you have at home a beautiful plant. And one day this plant starts to struggle. You know, the, the leaves are going down. It seems like it's slightly dying. Let me ask you this question. It will be super interactive. So I'll ask you guys to just unmute yourself. What is the first thing you're gonna do when you see that the the, the plant is struggling? Uh, I'll see if the plant is getting enough water, air, sunshine, and fertilizer. Exactly. So what Ashak is saying is I'm gonna water it. Now, watering is taking a conscious action. You, you spring into behavioral change. So you are doing <clears throat> conscious change. You're thinking if I water it, that's an action that I've taken. I'll get better result because the plant will start thriving. But imagine that you watered it and yet it's still wilting it's still not doing well what will you do next ashok mentioned that fertilizer you put, exactly you'll put some fertilizer into it in other words you're thinking like okay the conscious action didn't work the conscious behavior so maybe i'll go underneath what's on the surface and i'll put the fertilizer in in other words you're trying, if you think about your mind, it's as if you were fertilizing your mind with new empowering beliefs. You're trying to change your mindset. But what if, even after fertilizing and watering, so working on a conscious behavior, like what actions you take in business and subconscious, what I'm thinking about money and my work, what if it's still, still not producing your results? You need to change the environment. Exactly. What if this plant is planted in a soil that's toxic and therefore the roots of this plant can't pull in the nutrients that it needs? It cannot thrive. And what I'm showing you here is that there is an additional layer, the additional reason why we keep struggling in life. And these are energetic imprints of the past events that happened to us that keep us repeating the same situations. They are wounds and negative experiences from our childhood. Like for John, it was the experience of his father losing his million dollar business that today influences him, how he shows up in his marketing agency. And until we change the soil, until we figure out this what happened to me in childhood and then in my life, in my career, that got me stuck below my income potential, until you clear that soil, you'll just keep repeating the same events. So do you know what's in your soil? See, what I realized growing up is that I have ability to look into my client's soil and help them understand these experiences from the past and the mental and emotional patterns that they created around them that today limit their potential. And in the modality that I've developed and created to release them from these uh, imprints, 
I address all three levels simultaneously. So just like in this plant, we help you understand your distractive behaviors and change them into success habits. We reprogram your limitations within your subconscious mind with the positive mindset. And most importantly, we clear the negative emotions like fear, shame, guilt, sadness, apathy, resignation, lust that were attached to how you perceive yourself and your ability to make money. And I've called it the triple quantum reset. So in reality, every person has two options as they want to expand and move forward. They can go along the path that they are on right now. And we know by the, by the law of attraction, if you do the same thing, you will get the same results. You'll continue to struggle. Or you can do something different. You can take a different action, which will produce a different result. So today, my invitation to you is to join my Trip on Your Money Mindset Workshop, where I will help you understand what's holding you back from making the money that you want to and deserve and how to overcome it. This is a five-hour intensive, highly interactive workshop. And during those five, five hours, I will, in a very small setting of less than 10 people, I will help you understand your own money story and how to elevate yourself past where you are today. Now, this workshop is not for you if you're okay with the life the way it is, because as we just said earlier, um, if you want a new result, you have to take the new action. But it is for you if you want to think bigger, you want to have bigger results, yeah. and you're tired of struggling and of that constant nagging feeling that you're not making enough. So what you'll get during this uh, Money Mindset Workshop is we'll go through over 60 limiting beliefs around money and replace them with powerful beliefs and concepts into what you deserve and how you can show up in the world. We will also help you understand what is your money ceiling. Every human being has it. In fact, we have multiple money ceilings. We just get past them as we expand our consciousness. I'll also walk every single one of you through a step-by-step -step process to release those limitations around money. And there will be even a meditation and a guided visualization to help you create a huge vision about what is possible for you. Now, uh, this is a picture from actually one of my in-person uh, Money Mindset workshops. I've been doing these for over a decade. So I've worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs. So uh, you are welcome to join our community and support, be supported through this Unlock Your Success graduates and, and my clients. So my question to you is, imagine if you wanted to be unaffected by your past experiences, what would it look like? What would you create in your business? What new income levels you would be able to reach? And I have many testimonials on my website that I'm very happy to share with you. Katonia has worked with me since 2015. She's gone through multiple programs, multiple workshops, because she's constantly expanding. Her, her life has really taken off. So she is always foc focusing on, as she says, being empowered to be the best. This is uh, Jiten Sharma. And when we worked with him on his business, what he was very um, happy about is that she, he was thinking bigger, he was acting bigger, he even opened a new business in the process of working together. So the Money Mindset Workshop is $147. And because I like to reward people who take action, I have a few bonuses for you today. 
The bonus is that I will share with you my special meditation and release process called the Release My Poverty Consciousness Meditation. I also have a set of subliminal recordings that we program you for success. The, also, the good news is that with a special code EIN for your Entrepreneurs International Network, Today, you only have to pay $97. Now, you will have to use the promo code because if you go to my website, the price is $147. And I want to mention that I do have 100% satisfaction guarantee that if at the end of this workshop, you have not understood why you struggled or why you're stuck below certain level, and if you haven't had major shifts in your mind about what, what you're capable of doing and what you need to do to reach the, link, the level of your income that you desire, that I will give you your money back. And in 10 years of offering this guarantee, not a single person has ever asked me for the money back after this workshop. So I fully stand by this guarantee. So the question is, do you want to live on a quarter of your potential or do you want to step into all that's possible for you? This is another um, a testimonial from my client who came to the workshop and afterwards she said, I don't know how it's happening, the miracles are happening. And really miracles are us changing how we perceive ourselves and what we are capable of. This is another workshop participant, Jonina Gay. She said, Dagmar will take you to the heights that you never thought possible. And it's because we train you how to think much bigger and show up bigger in your uh, business and in your life. And there are so many more uh, testimonials, which you can read on my website. There's so many I'm running out of space on how to uh, include them. So now is your chance. And I invite you to go to the link, which uh, Roger so generously will put in the chat for me to, uh, to get your ticket to the Triple Your Money Mindset, which is coming up on August 27th and use the promo code EIN to save $50. I also have a gift for you all, uh, and that is a free masterclass called Unlock Your Abundance, which will be an excellent preparation for the Money Mindset Workshop, because in that masterclass, which is already pre-recorded, you will understand the, the emotions that are negative that you unconsciously attached to your, your concept of money. Those emotions will include fear, self-sabotage, sadness, apathy, last pride, resignation, uh, hurt, shame, and guilt. So, so many of them that we, again, through experiences in life, whether our own, or as observed through our reality, have attached to the concept of what we can make, how much money we can make, and uh, how successful we can be in our business. So thank you for participating in the workshop. Thank you for being interactive. And let me ask you, are there any questions uh, at this point on anything that we covered in the workshop or um, about the Triple Your Money Mindset workshop. You've obviously wowed us with your wisdom. Thank you very much, Dagmar. Are there Thank any you. questions, attendees? No questions at this point, but I have a suggestion. You showed us those three things. Uh, the when he showed us the picture of a plant, three things, soil, inner soil, and uh, the leaves. There is a fourth factor, which is environment. When people want to take action, there are many people, their relatives, their friends, who are asking them and telling them, are you crazy? Do you think you can do it? 
that environment affects them just like the sunshine affects the plant their negative talk affects those people who are otherwise positive and want to go ahead get affected by this negative talk yes i fully agree with you and what what i do when i work with my clients i literally seal their mind energetically emotionally and mentally from influence of negative people because when you expand and when you grow you need space within which to reshift and up level how you show up in the world so one of the techniques that i immediately teach is how to disengage from the influence of others and create personal sovereignty personal space and not be affected that those are trying to bring us down it's actually very easy. It's just something that's not being uh, taught in schools or, or by others. So a lot of people unconsciously fall under the influence of negative people, not knowing that we have within us full power to create that shield from other people's negative emotions. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that point. It was really wonderful insight into what exactly goes on into the mind of an entrepreneur and thank you so much for that thank you thank you asha i will uh, echo that uh, dagmar on behalf of eins uh, 79000 members only five of which uh, came and enjoyed your words of wisdom live but nevertheless everyone will have access to the video uh, and uh, uh, I'm quite sure the vast majority of us are indeed thinking smaller uh, than we need to be thinking. So thank you for showing us the steps to break out of that small thinking. Uh, they are indeed very simple steps. Thank you. Only one small step at a time. <laughs> Wasn't there a guy who went to the moon who said something similar? One step, one small step for one small step for man, one step for mankind. I'm not sure. Anyway, you did great. Uh, and I'm really sorry to know you're a little under the weather. So why don't we uh, shut her down now and you can go take care of your health. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone else. See you next Tuesday. Bye bye for now. <laughs>